In this video, I'm going to show you how to create impossible layouts using something called CSS Grid and it's hard to work with. It's hard to understand, but I had a breakthrough moment with CSS Grid that made me understand how it works and I'm going to try to teach that to you in this video, but here is some examples of what you're going to learn how to create in this video. So CSS Grids are uh, also commonly known as uh, bento box styles. I don't know if you've ever been to a Japanese restaurant and you ordered a bento box and you had some sushi here, you had some rice here, some salad here, maybe a meat over there. And that's what a grid is or a bento box is creating a unique layout that doesn't follow a traditional pattern of rows and columns and stuff like that. And you see these everywhere these days on modern websites. They're hard to create. There's not great tools to create it. But I'm going to make it easy for you to create. I'm going to show you a tool that makes it so easy to do. Uh, you're going to be blown away. So here's a, a, a grid. Uh, you can see how it follows a non-standard pattern of columns and layouts or containers, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this one has a bunch of things moving around, but you can easily create one like this. And with the things moving around, if you had some motion animation going on, uh, here's a different kind of grid. There's very little gap between everything. There's these white lines and it follows this really nice looking layout. Uh, there's just so many examples. Here's a, a complex one. I probably wouldn't use something like that, but it looks really nice. Um, this is the one I actually like the most. Uh, and then here's like a real basic one uh, to make. So I'm going to show you how to do this. I'm going to show you the breakthrough that I had and hopefully it helps you have a breakthrough so that you can create these impossible layouts that are traditionally very, very hard. Now we're going to be using a pre-release version of Spectra. Spectra is used on, they're approaching a million websites, which is pretty amazing. And But what, but what you're going to learn you can apply to any page building tool that offers CSS Grid. Unfortunately, most of them don't offer it. And if they do offer it, they don't have the controls that you need to easily manipulate and set up your grid. Uh, Spectra offers both. It has the CSS grid that is added to the block editor. It has all the controls to easily be able to position things. Now, if you're using a builder that has grid without the options, uh, it just means you have to add some code to it in order to, to get it to be how you want. But what I'm going to show you today, the breakthrough that I had, it will work regardless of the page building tool. It just so happens we're going to be using Spectra, which is releasing CSS Grid in a few days. Now, the good news is I put a link in the video description. When you click on that, it's going to recreate a site with the CSS Grid and the grids that we're talking about in this video. So you can see exactly how I created them. And it's a total test environment. You can you can uh, hack away at it all you want and the site will be good for four hours. So all you have to do is go in the video description and click on the link. Uh, so I'll go ahead and uh, create that now. I've just entered the link. I'm hitting enter and you can see the site is being recreated uh, for me right before my eyes. Uh, there's no login or registration or anything like that required. Literally just click on the link it's going to open up in your browser and you'll be able to follow along in this video with the CSS grid tool that we're using inside of this video. And that's it. That probably just took a, under a minute and we have this site. Now let me show you what's on the site. Uh, I also built this site using the AI website builder in ZipWP. So that's why it says all this text and there's these about in programs and all that. I said, make me a website about learning how to use CSS Grid. But what you want to see is the examples that I added here. So here's a uh, grid example number one. You can see each of these containers in the grid are taking up different widths and heights, and they even have a unique order, right? One, two, three, four, and then here is five. You're going to learn how to do this. Here's another example that I have queued up for you. And this grid is a little different because these are just images. It's not containers. So creating this was very easy and it's very light on the code. 
Um, all right, and we have uh, info here, info there. It's just a nice looking grid. Here's a more complex example, example number three. And I'm gonna show you how to recreate this right now. Uh, right here, you can see we have five containers, one, two, and then down here is three, four, and then we have five in this unique location. And that's one of the nice things about CSS Grid that you're gonna learn is how to position these wherever you want inside of the grid. It doesn't have to follow a hierarchical order. It can, th these elements that you have in the grid could, could be placed anywhere that you want. Now you're only hearing this uh, from me and this is the breakthrough on how to build these grids that I had. So there's two parts to a grid. There's the structure and that's where we're gonna set how many columns and how many rows to recreate a grid. Just think of an Excel spreadsheet or a Google Sheet where you have columns and you have rows and those columns and rows have positions, right? This is like column A or B, uh, this is row one or two. So there's two aspects to setting up one of these grids and having full control over it. One is to set up the structure of the grid, but then the other one is to create a map of the grid. And the map is what you need in order to perfectly and precisely place elements anywhere you want in the grid. So you need to understand the map concept. And this was the breakthrough that I discovered that you need to have a map. These are separate things. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's build a structure for this and then let's build the map for this and then we'll recreate it and it's all going to make sense. So I am going to take a screenshot of this using my screenshot tool and it's going to pull up perfect. Okay, so what you want to do when you're looking at any grid that you want to recreate is try to figure out how many rows and column or columns and rows that you need to create this layout. So I'm going to do this uh, step counter right here. Perfect. So I'm going to try to figure this out. Okay, so I'm going to put a one here on the top left. And this is my first column. And I just need to like visually gauge how many columns I want. So for this, uh, here's where my second column is going to be my third column and my fourth column. So to create this grid, I need four columns. And um, I am going to now determine how many rows I need to make. So one, then this right here is going to be the second column. And it looks like I just need two columns. So to recreate this, I need four rows, sorry, columns and two rows. Let's go and make that right now. And then we're going to come back and we're going to build uh, the map. So this is the structure, but then we need to build the map. I'll go here and let's create a new page. I'm going to go to new. I'm going to do page. And then let's just go ahead and call this grid example four. And let's go ahead and throw down a container. Perfect. And I'm just going to choose this container. It's got nothing in it. Now with the container selected, over here on the right, at the bottom, there's this layout option. And this is what's new. You always had Flexbox with Spectra. They were one of the first to bring it to the block editor. But here's the new option. It's called Grid. And when you click on that, we see all the options change. So right here is where we set up the columns and the rows for the grid. And we just realized from here that we need four columns and we need two rows. So I'm going to go back and if you want to add columns, you click on this plus and you can see it gets added. So let's go column three, column four and for rows, column uh, row two. So now I have set up this grid and uh, it, it has the structure that I know that I need. So now let's uh, put the containers inside. So you can see I've got five containers, one, two, three, four, and five. So I'm gonna go ahead and add those. It's very simple. I'm gonna click on the plus and I'm gonna add a container and you can see there it is. Now I'm gonna style this and then I'm gonna duplicate it. Let me style it first. So when I click on it, 
I'm going to add a different background color. I'll just choose this from the color palette. And then inside of it, I'm going to add a heading just like this. And uh, for the heading, I'm going to put the number one. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, change the color of the heading. I'll go ahead and make that white. Uh, there it is. Perfect. Uh, now what I want to do is I want to duplicate this container. Uh, so when I click on it, actually here, let's click here to show the list of you and I can see my container right here. I'm going to duplicate it and we'll get those five containers. So you just click the three dots and duplicate like that. And let's go ahead and have five containers. Uh, there we go. Now I'm going to change the number for each. So I just entered the numbers of the order of the containers. Now it's kind of hard to see these containers uh, because they're all using the same background image. So let's put a little bit of gap between them. So if I click on the parent container, which has all of our uh, grid settings like this, uh, and there's also alignment options here. Maybe we should uh, align it right now. So I'm going to center um, the items, the numbers. So when I click on the container here, I have my grid settings, but I need to go to style spacing and I'm going to add a little bit of gap. And gap is the term of the spacing in between rows and columns. So I just added some row spacing. And you have all the controls here, pixels, percentages, VH, all of that. And I'm going to add 20. So now you can see they're kind of separated out a little bit. So you can clearly see uh, each of these uh, containers quite easily. So now how do we make this look like this? So the first container you can see is taking up two columns of spacing. You can see column one and column two. So it's taking up two columns. So we need to click into the container and say this container needs to take up two columns of spacing. It's very simple. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to click on the first container. Now, each of these containers have some specific options here that say grid item settings. And when I expand it, well, here it is column width. So I can say it takes up two columns. I literally click in there and just enter two. And now you can see it's taking up that double width just like here. So the second container is taking up just one column of width and one column of height. So I don't need to make any changes there. Uh, the, the third container is taking up the same. The fourth container is taking up the double width. And we'll deal with this fifth one in a second. OK, so it was the fourth container right here was also taking up the double width. So I'm going to go in there and I'm going to put a two in for the column width. And there you have it. Now is the question, how do we get this fifth container to be up here on the top right and take up double height just like this? It's the fifth container. How do I get it from where it's naturally showing here? How do I position this where I want? And that is where the grid map idea comes in. That was the breakthrough. So we understand this concept we built out, right? of columns and rows, but the map is different. So the way you need to think of a map is I know I have these four columns here. Let's go ahead and put the number five at the end. This is the map. OK, so it's a little different. So let me uh, reset my numbering. Uh, this is one. Uh, let's see. Wait, one, uh, two and three. So now I'm building out a map. Let me just go ahead and uh, delete that. Great. So this is different from the structure. It's the map. OK, and a real easy way to create the map is just add an extra number at the end. So for the rows, I have one, two, three, four. And for the map, I added this number five. And for uh, the so sorry, this was the columns and for the rows, one, two and three. Now, don't get this confused with the structure. I only have four columns in the structure and two rows. The map is different and the map is how we're going to custom position any element wherever the heck we want inside of the grid. So there's an option right here. When I click on any of these containers, you saw the simple Right. That's where uh, right here for the first one, I said this grid item settings, the simple setting would be, OK, it's going to take up two of the columns on the width. But there's this advanced option 
And the advanced option is what you're going to use when you want to position an element anywhere you want in the grid. And you simply need to specify based on the map where it starts and it finishes in the positioning, where it starts and it finishes in the posi positioning. So I need to know where it starts for the column and ends, where it starts for the row and it ends. This is actually very easy if you have the map and you view the map different from the structure. So if I want it here, I needed to start at column four. I needed to start at position four for the column and end at position five. I needed to start for the height at one and end at three. And watch, this is where the magic happens. So I clicked on advanced and it was going to start at four and end at five. See, it moved over. And then for the row start, it's gonna start at one, oops, not four, one, and then enter three. And you can see the magic just happened. We were able to accomplish this layout right here where it's column one, two, three, four, and five is custom positioned uh, and and it was very easy to accomplish if you understand the mapping system. And that's the key to unlocking these impossible layouts is understanding how to set up the structure and then how to set up the map. The map is the key to positioning any of these container items wherever you want. And each of these containers have the advanced setting option for those blocks or containers that you want to custom position wherever you want inside of a grid. And this is how you can accomplish some of these really difficult layouts where the positioning just doesn't follow the natural order. It's very unique in how it's done here. This one's actually very similar to what we just created. Now, what's nice about how this is inside of Spectra is it unlocks all of these options that power users would need and you can ease into in your education and learning about creating impossible layouts using CSS Grid. So you saw on the child container level, there's this option that says Grid Item Settings and you can have simple where I wanted to take double width or double height or however much width or however much height. But then there's the advanced option here for positioning as well as at the parent level container where we set up our grid right here. You can click into these and there's all kinds of extra options to get this to be exactly how you want. We have advanced properties for auto, min, max. I just left it at custom and I would recommend that you leave it at custom as well as you're easing into learning this grid system and how to structure it and how to map it out. Now, then you also aren't done yet. You need to check the mobile settings for your grids and there's complete mobile responsiveness options. So if you want this grid to look different on a tablet, different on a mobile, maybe you just want it all stacked on a mobile, you can easily do that because all those options are right here. And you're going to need to do that, uh, especially if you're using the advanced settings on the desktop for one of these containers. You're gonna wanna go in and you're gonna want to check and verify those mobile settings to make sure the grid is looking exactly how you want it on mobile devices. So to recap, the key to understanding these and the breakthrough that I had was realizing that the structure is different from the map. With the map, you can position anything anywhere, but you got to understand the differences, how to structure it, and then how to build out your map, which is your easy guide to custom positioning. And it's all very simple. Now, what I showed you is coming to Spectra. It's built. It's going to be releasing in like a week. But if you click in the link down below, it's going to recreate the entire site for you. And you can start learning hacking away at it, figuring it out now so that you can build these impossible layouts. So I don't usually beg for thumbs up and subscribes and all of that, but if you have benefited and had a breakthrough of your own just now, give this video a thumbs up. And if anyone's not sure how Grid works, share this video because it can be used regardless of the building tool 
that you use. It's just this concept that makes it really simple for anyone to build these impossible layouts. Thank you for watching this video. If you have questions, ask down below. I'd love to see some of the impossible layouts that you build. Thanks for watching and supporting this channel, and I'll see you next time.